Hi, in uh, this episode, I'm going to try and show you how I set up a system where I use post GIS data uh, on the desktop and in the field collection uh, application Q field, and how you can share data between those uh, seamlessly. Uh, it's a, a few steps uh, needed, and you can probably do this in multiple ways. This is the way that I've found uh, working for me. So, first of all, I have set up uh, a PostGIS database, uh, not <laughs> without issues, but it is running on a server, and uh, I need to make a connection to that first. So, let's call that GIS server. And the host has an IP. And the database is called GeoDB. And I want to use a new configuration. And the first time you create this type of configuration, you will need to set up a, a master, day, a master password. So if you have used this configuration before, uh, it will already be set. So let's see. Uh, I already had that. If you haven't uh, a master password already, you will be uh, asked to set that password. And uh, on this desktop, that one is uh, pa that password is stored in my wallet. So it will automatically be applied every time I open QGIS. So, the name for uh, this uh, authentication uh, could be like GS Server GeoDB. Uh, and the important thing is the ID here. It will be automatically generated if you don't choose anything. Uh, but if you are an office with more than one user, uh, you should probably uh, coordinate the name of the ID for accessing data, since this is the ID that will be stored in the project file in QGIS. And uh, wherever you open that project file, it will look for that uh, authentication ID in uh, each installation's uh, authentication database. So in this case, I will just call it PG for PostGIS and GeoDB. It should be seven letters or seven figures long. So pick something that makes sense. Uh, it's optional to have a URL reference for the resource. I don't know what this does, but I will type in the IP address for the PostGIS server. So I can at least have some indication on where this is uh, connecting to. Uh, in this case, I will use a basic authentication. Uh, on the PostGIS server, I have set up uh, user groups and user names. And I have uh, given the user groups different rights uh, in the database. and. Uh, that way I can add and remove user names to those groups and uh, keep uh, track of who has the right to do what in the database. So here I have created a user called GIS user with a password. And that's it. So no matter what you set up for username and password, uh, as long as you have access to this database, uh, it will be referenced with this ID. So for each uh, user, they can set up their own username and password as long as they reference it with the same ID here. So I uh, can test the configuration. Yes, it worked. And uh, I add some things here that I like. 
like so. And now I have already a project one schema with a few test layers. So let's just start with uh, OpenStreetMap. Let's add those two layers. Just simply uh, two simple layers. And let's uh, style them as well quickly. That's good enough. Uh, so let's save this project in uh, uh, well, my documents folder. And let's call it uh, past GIS test, like so. Uh, this file in theory, can be opened in QField. And uh, I have uh, QField installed as a desktop application on the same computer here. So let me put it here, make it a bit bigger, and open local file. So in the documents folder, I, let's see, where do we have it there? Post.js test open. I get an error because I haven't transferred the authentication information to QField. So let's close out. In order to do that, I need to go into QGIS settings uh, in options and here you have a section called authentication and here is my authentication file or section with the id that was created and uh, in uh, QGIS you can go to utilities select the, the line and go to utilities and export selected authentication configurations to file uh, you can password encrypt this file uh, and that is probably a good idea in some cases but when you transfer to a mobile uh, platform like a tablet or a phone or something like that it won't work uh, if you encrypt the file it needs to be unencrypted so Enter, don't enter any password in it for this case. Uh, you get a warning if you do, but uh, that's okay. So, okay, save it in, uh, let's save it in the same location. And let's call this QField authentication for geodb.xml. like that. Uh, to transfer to your mobile application, you connect it. And I've connected uh, my Android phone here. And you go to Android data. And then you look for the CH OpenGIS Q field files. And then you go to Q field, and there's a folder called auth. And this is where you paste, or this is where you copy your, uh, your authentication file to. So let's make a new uh, document, that one, copy. Paste. So now I have it there. Uh, I already tried this before, so I have an old file here, but since I've changed everything, uh, this one 
won't work, so I can just remove it. So now I have that one in the uh, auth folder and uh, it should just work when I open the project in uh, the mobile application. Uh, for recording purposes, I am using uh, a desktop version of QField and that is possible to install on Windows uh, and on Linux and Mac as a beta uh, for now. Um, so let me see. On Windows and on Linux, I'm not sure how it is on Mac. In your when you install the QField application and run it for the first time, it will create a QField folder in your documents uh, folder. So if you go to your documents folder on Linux or on Windows, there should be a QField folder when you run QField for the first time. And in, inside that, you have this auth folder. So here I can copy my authentication file and I can paste it inside the, this auth folder. Uh, and in theory, next time I relaunch QField, I can open the project file and it should just work. And it did. And uh, now I can use QField as normally. Edit. I can uh, add a, a point to this location. Add a label. Label 3 or 4. And there we go. And if I switch back to QGIS, I only need to do a refresh. And there it is. And I can also, in QGIS, edit the same layer and add a point there. Call this label 5. I can also edit this layer. So let me add some vertices. Like that. Save my edits. I can stop editing. And if I switch back to Q field and update it, it is updated. So that is one way you can work with the data shared over internet uh, and uh, collaborate between several users in the field and in the office. So the o only thing you need to be careful about is uh, setting up authentication for accessing the database. Uh, and uh, the authentication file uh, can be transferred to at least the Android version of the mobile application and the desktop versions. I'm not sure about the iOS version of QField. Uh, I haven't had that much luck with uh, iOS in uh, GIS applications, but uh, anyway. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful to some of you at least, and uh, I'll uh, see you next time.